Hello! In this video you will learn how to hatch objects with Grasshopper using query model hatch patterns and model hatch components. And how to create your own hatches with model hatch pattern and hatch line components. Here is how the components connect to each other. Model hatch is the component that you use to create the hatch and apply it to a boundary. Hatch line component is used to create a series of lines and the geometry of a hatch. The hatch lines are then fed to the model hatch pattern component, which is used to create a name and description for the pattern and the hatch pattern in Rhino. You can then feed the hatch pattern created with model hatch pattern or queried from your existing patterns with the query model hatch patterns component into the model hatch component, which creates the one specific hatch in your model, the geometry object. Let's get to examples. Here on the right, I have the section of an IPE200 steel profile. Now when we section things, it's a good idea to represent the cut sections with a hatch. The boundary input of the model hatch component needs a closed curve. I am connecting the IPE200 profile which I have drawn to the boundary input. Now the profile got hatched. The hatch pattern comes from the query model hatch patterns component. I'm using a list item component so I got the first hatch pattern that it found from my 3DM model, which was the solid hatch. If you know the name of the hatch pattern that you want to use, you can connect it to the query model hatch patterns component. You can also use the match method filter to search. Now as I work with a steel section, I'm gonna search for a more appropriate hatch. Now if you have a uniform hatch like this, the base point of the hatch doesn't really matter. If the hatch is too dense, you can change the scale here. You can add a boolean toggle if you want to hide or show the boundary. I'm gonna hide this so you can see the effect. If you want to add a background color, you can do it here. The pattern that I'm using already has its lines aligned in 45 degree angle. But if you want to edit the rotation, you can connect a rotation in radians into the rotation input. Now if I would want my lines to be vertical, I would add a 45 degree rotation. This of course is case specific. You can also rotate the objects that you are hatching. I'm going to bake this object. Rotate it, internalize it to this. You can now see that the hatch has been applied to this planar curve. But you of course cannot hatch objects that are not planar, so if I'm gonna stretch this, the component goes boom. So how do we create our own hatch patterns? Here I have a rectangle that I'm hatching using a grasshopper generated pattern. It starts with the hatch line component. As I mentioned, the start point of a hatch doesn't really matter when you are having a uniform style. In this case, I am using the start point of this vector as the hatch start point. But when I'm moving it, it doesn't really change the pattern that I'm using that much. So for most of the applications that I use hatches, this doesn't matter at all. The next input is the direction vector. You can think of these two inputs as if you would create a line SDL. So you have a start and a direction, but in the hatch, the length is infinite. The direction vector that I'm using is a 110, which means that the line is on the xy plane of the world and it's moving in 45 degree angle between the axis vectors. 
we could also use this vector from previously as the direction vector. Now you can see that the pattern follows the direction of this arrow. And if I want this pattern on the right to be in a 45 degree angle, I have to use a 45 degrees here. Now the offset input changes how far away the lines are from each other. We can keep it in one. And now the segments input works just like the line types that we have covered previously. Currently I have defined this with a continuous line, so I have a segment length of one with no gap in between. Now if all you want is a continuous line, I think you should just leave the segments input empty, because this is just extra computation that you don't need. But to demonstrate the functionality, I am going to start adding more segments. So if you don't know what to do, you can always just hover on the input and it will tell you. So the positive values are a line and negative values are a gap. So I'm going to add a 5 unit gap in the segment. Now you can see that our pattern has a 1 unit of line and then 5 units of space, then 1 unit of line and so on. Now you can use the shift input to sort of push the segments on the next row onwards. You can see what I mean when I start rolling the slider. The pattern starts to shift to the right. When we are done with our hatch, we use the model hatch pattern component to give it a name and then connect it to the hatch pattern input of the model hatch. Now if you want, you can bake the hatch pattern and then you can use the hatch name that you created to query for the hatch. I need to change the scale here. Now you might be wondering why the pattern on the box is in a 45 degree angle and the pattern on the IPE profile is completely vertical. It is because the pattern on the right is the original pattern which had its hatch lines defined in a 45 degree angle and the pattern on the left is the reused hatch with a 45 degree angle that I have again rotated 45 degrees. If I disconnect this input the patterns match again except for the scale of course. That's all for today, I hope you learned something again and if you enjoy short informative tutorials like this make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.